Hi Erin. Hello. So, we know that the lack of diversity in the tech industry is a huge issue. In your opinion, what can tech entrepreneurs do to counteract this? Yeah, well firstly, thanks for having me. It's, um, it's really a pleasure to be here talking about what is such a critical topic. So I think there's a few things, and our role at Silicon Valley Bank, we think, is to help to bring some data and some insights into some of these topics. So, in 2018, and actually the last number of years, we launched a Startup Outlook survey. And what that survey told us is that actually over 40% of our client base has put in programs in place to increase uh, female uh, leadership, which is fantastic. And that was a 25% increase year over year. So we've got our 2019 survey out, so hopefully we'll see those numbers climbing. But I think that there's some tactical things that uh, our entrepreneurs and, and the founding teams can do to accelerate that. And some of these things are actually quite simple, but it's about carving out the time and really dedicating the resource behind it. So firstly, I would say it's measuring. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, suggest that measuring diversity within your companies every single month in the board pack is a great habit to get into. We measure our diversity data within Silicon Valley Bank UK, and when you measure things and you see the results, I think it helps us to take action and change if we don't like what we're seeing. So that would be the first thing. The second thing that we do is we use software to uh, really evolve our job descriptions. So we make sure our job descriptions are gender neutral, and we make sure that our interview techniques um, can track diversity within, uh, within our candidate search. So I would suggest taking a look at your job descriptions, taking a look at your interview questions, and your interview techniques if you're not getting the results that you're looking for. I would say the third thing is, is well, creating an open environment to raise some of these topics. And actually, letting your colleagues know it's okay to have a voice mm -hmm. uh, and to participate in some of these debates internally and externally. Uh, and I think that inclusive environment will, will usually generate some really fantastic ideas. Uh, I'd also add to that, to those tips, um, starting early. And sometimes it's easier said than done, but if you embrace having a diverse founding team from day one, at, in your core, it's so much easier than layering on diversity um, in later years or when you're, you know, really, really heads down, busy thinking about product development. And that goes for not just companies, but venture funds as well. Um, I can tell you we speak with entrepreneurs probably on a weekly basis who are bringing their founding teams together, um, and there's a, more venture funds being started in the last couple of years than even the last you know, mm -hmm. 10 years combined. So actually creating um, diverse VC and PE funds, I think will have a really positive knock-on effect into our industry. And then lastly, I would suggest, and one of the things that we've, we've done recently is you really refreshing your men internal mentoring and sponsorship program. So if you're not getting the desired results around employee retention, re employee engagement, what are you doing about mentorship and sponsorship internally that could help drive you know, better results? So there's some things that we think about. It definitely is about getting the basics right from day one, isn't it? I think so. And I think it's, again, carving out the time and then not letting it sort of dissipate over time. It's really staying committed to it and building it into your, into your routine as a management team. You work really closely with tech companies across the world. Can you perhaps give us some examples of some good initiatives or schemes that these clients of yours are doing in order to counteract the lack of diversity? Absolutely. We are extremely fortunate that we get to work with the most exciting companies across the globe. And there's some really fantastic UK and European businesses that I think are really leading from the front with respect to mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion within the sector. And some of those companies are, you know, World Remit and Gap Square that either internally or externally are really affecting change. Uh, the other thing I would say is broadly, I, I, I see our client base um, taking some really positive steps. And uh, as mentioned earlier at our Startup Outlook report, over 40% of our client base actually has instituted formal programs mm -hmm. with respect to increasing diversity in, in leadership ranks, which is, which is exciting. And that was actually 25% growth year over year. So hopefully in our 2019 report, it will be even better. But some of the granular things that these, these companies are doing that we've seen uh, success across the board is a few things. So it's, it's really refining your job descriptions. So thinking about the language that you use to attract talent. So if you're not seeing diverse candidates, one of the things that you might need to think about is what is your job description saying about you and your brand? 
and then following that through around your interview questions and your interview techniques. You might not be attracting a certain part of the market and so it might be helpful to look at that whole process from start to end. The other thing that we're seeing, um, particularly around if, uh, retention, is mm -hmm. our companies refining their mentorship and their sponsorship program. So, uh, do you have an environment uh, and a program in place to really help um, these individuals work through your organization into leadership positions? So, continuing to refine mentorship and sponsorship within your organization is really important. Um, I think creating an environment to have open and honest and authentic conversations um, with respect to diversity is, is critical and a lot of our, our clients are actually bringing in heads of people or heads of talent earlier and earlier and earlier to help management, to help founders navigate which is what is sometimes a really complex and, and tricky topic. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I would say is really fostering a culture of participation, right? We, it's no longer okay to sit on the sidelines for some of these topics. So participating in wonderful organizations like Diversity VC, uh, we work with them closely in, in the UK and they have a report coming out um, in the not too distant future around some fantastic data that will help some of these conversations. Working with the board list who launched in the U.S. and have, have come over to Europe around promoting diversity um, on board. So it's, it's helping to foster open communication, but then also allowing people the space to participate externally as well. More rapidly. You rightly pointed out, you know, diversity is much more than just gender. Um, but clearly we know that there's a real problem when it comes to women in the space raising funding for their businesses, despite the fact that more often than not they deliver better returns for their investors. What's your take on that? Yeah, so this, this funding gap is, is a real, uh, I would say a real serious issue within, within the industry. Um, and like you said, it, it's not just about women, it's mm -hmm. about uh, minorities as well in terms of the, the, the lack of, of funding going into, into these groups. So I would say that there's specific advice or thoughts or observations that I would give, but uh, then again, there's probably feedback that I'd give to any founder and entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, and advice in terms of raising money. So the first thing that would be is to do just as much diligence on the source of capital that they're doing on you as a company. So really dig deep and find out who is interested in your space in your subsector, maybe which partner has mm -hmm. the most relevant direct expertise in, in helping a business of your kind and being very highly targeted. I think that's going to increase any founder's chance of success. I think it's, again, doing your homework with respect to the resources available to you. Um, there's a lot of really positive things that have been changing over the last 6, 12, 18 months around office hours for entrepreneurs. Um, really gaining insights and developing relationships with these sources of capital mm -hmm. that can give you advice on what to do, what not to do. Um, and then I think for, again, for every entrepreneur, it's about that tenacity. So don't give up. I mean, it's, it's fundraising is very difficult. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I guess it's meant to be hard, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, you know, it is harder for some, but don't give up because you know, I think that we are creating unbelievable businesses across Europe and, and I know that with that continued grit and tenacity we'll see some really positive change. I would add one more thing, which again, it's how do we then also affect and evolve the, um, uh, the amount of diversity within the venture capital and private equity community. Mm -hmm. That to me, there is going to be, a, there is a direct correlation between diverse sources of capital to the, t the teams in which they invest. So how can we raise the issue to help the venture capital funds that are raising right now to create diverse teams from day one? It is extremely difficult to change a partnership mid-fund. Mm. And then you have to wait a number of years until the next fund is hopefully raised. So I do think it's um, incumbent upon all of us to think about how do we increase uh, diversity within the, the VC and PE world as well. Definitely, I agree. I think the onus is basically on everyone to try and absolutely. change this and as quickly as possible. I, I absolutely agree. It's, it's not okay. No one can really sit on the sidelines with respect to this topic. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time, Erin. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.